Oh, the other element of this whole thing is what about glyphosate when it's heated up? What if you have glyphosate residue on certain foods and then you're cooking or heating those foods up? What does that do to it? Because I know there's some data out there showing that a lot of these pesticides become more toxic when they're heated. So that's another area, another avenue of discussion. Probably not a lot of data on it, but definitely a lot of theoretical, well, you know, what if that does make it worse? And so that's definitely a concern. So, you know, out of the gates, I think the big thing people can control is going to be water and runoff. So everyone should have at least a reverse osmosis water filter to, to filter a lot of the, the roundup uh, glyphosate out of that. So you're not getting exposed via water. And then number two is do your best to eat organic, or if you are on a budget, try to do at least clean 15. These are going to be the foods that are going to have a relative peel over it, right? Avocado, banana, those kind of things that will decrease the amount of residue because it's a peel and they just going to have less of the glyphosate anyway. And so try to do at least clean the clean 15 uh, and then avoid the dirty dozen, if you will, but try to go organic free range as much as you possibly can, because it's not just the nutrient density that's important with organic. It's the decrease in toxic load. There's both. You, you win twice. You, you win with nutrient density and you decrease toxic load. I think it was, um, I had Joel Salton on my podcast last year and he talked about his eggs that are pasture fed. And he sent a bunch of conventional eggs to the grocery store and I'm sorry, to, to a lab, actually, I'm sorry, to a lab. So conventional eggs he bought at the grocery store to his own pasture eggs in his backyard, his farm, right? And he compared the nutrient levels of it. And so he just compared one nutrient folate and he found that his eggs had 19 times more folate than the conventional eggs, 19 times. So if you look at it, it's like, wow, I'm getting 19 times of an important nutrient and maybe the eggs cost twice as much. Well, that's kind of a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good ROI in your investment there. It is. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I need to interview him. He's awesome. And I love his books and love seeing the farming videos. A lot of people, I know he has like students, they'll, they'll do all the work for him. He's got an amazing setup because he pays like zero labor costs because everybody <laughs> wants to learn. So he's got all these people like harvesting his chickens for him. Yeah. It's a pretty sweet gig. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's good for everyone to understand that, to know about it, to be on top of that and um, to look at your food differently, right? You got to look at it like, all right, I'm decreasing the toxic load side. That's a one important big vector. And then I'm increasing the nutrient density side. And if you look at it like that, I think you go into the grocery store and you, you make different food choices. I think it was Michael Pollan talked about this in his uh, the book, Omnivore's Dilemma. As a society today, we allocate way less of our income towards food. I think it's today, it's like 9% of our income goes towards food as a society. I think about, I think it was 50 to 100 years ago, it was twice that, it was 18%. And so people prioritize food a lot more um, from an income standpoint, you know, they're willing to put more of their money where it counts. And today that's not the case. And so I just think it's really important that people really look at allocating their money towards food because that's the foundation of everything, especially once you get sick, you're going to really wish you did. <laughs>